Yo, 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 what is up, everyone? Chris here from Fake Sports News, back at it again with another video. Today, I'm going to be bringing you guys a quick recap as to what happened during today's matches, my time, as well as what you guys can expect going into today's matches, your time. That, of course, being Sunday, the last day of week two of stage five. Now, looking at our first match of the day, we, of course, kicked things off with the subliners taking on the Ravens. You guys know I was expecting this one to go 3 1 in favor of the subliners, but it really, really did not. Game one. Of course, we can check Mate Hardpoint. It was very, very back and forth all the way up until the end, where, of course, the London Royal Ravens were able to clutch up and close things out on P2. They had an insane hold towards the end, and they made the comeback against New York. New York was really, really up big, and honestly, the Ravens just showed their overall composure and their ice, and that's why they won this map. Looking at the stats, they really shouldn't have won this. Um, of course, Asim on the subliner set a 1.07, Mac at a 1.25, Clay at a 1.03, and Hydra went even. And then on the London Royal Ravens side, Afro had a 0.96, Sean had a 0.9, Paul had a 0.83, and Alex had a 1.04. So the difference maker in this series is really the resurgence of Alex as a strong sub to complement Afro. Honestly, looking at the stats, like he had a 1.04 here in the game one hard point, he just played very, very well for the Ravens, and that's what helped them to win the maps that they did end up winning. Looking at map two, it was a 6 0 on standoff SD. No point in really analyzing that. I mean, Mac had a 3 KD, went 9 and 3. Hydra had a, a 2.5 KD, excuse me. And no point in looking at that. Map 3, that of course being raid control. I mean, the Ravens just dominated. Like looking at the stats, Afro had a 2, Shawnee had a 1.6, Alex had a 1.2, Paul had a 0.68. But no one on subliners was even close to doing okay. Mac had a 1.07, but they didn't really do a lot. Um, of course, looking at the map for Raid Hardpoint, I will show you guys the stats for this one. It was very, very close, 250 to 244, as Raid Hardpoint usually is. It goes down to the last hill, last second, and it's always a nail biter. So looking at the New York subliner side, of course, they came out with the victory here, 250 to 244. Asim dropped a 1.08 KD, Mac had a 1.04, Clay had a 1.04, and Hydra was frying. He had a 1.44. Looking at the Raven side, Afro had a 1.13, Sean had a 0.41, Paul had, of course, a 0.86, and Alex had a 1.25. So like I said, this series was the resurgence of Alex. He played very, very well, and that was a difference maker in this game. And then five, I mean, it was just a stomping from the Ravens, right? It's a 6-1, Ace had a 0.5, Mac had a 0.43, Play had a 0.29, Hydra went even. And then on the Ravens' side, Afro had a 3.67, Alex had a 3.67. They dropped the same exact KD. I think Afro got streaks. I mean, it was just a bloodbath on Moscow. Afro and Alex combined for 22 kills. If the sub duo is combining for 22 kills, I mean, there it is right there. Looking at the series stats overall, of course, obviously the London Royal Ravens dominated. The sub duo went crazy. Afro and Alex. Afro had a 1.26. He was a KD leader for this entire series, and Alex was not too. Excuse me. Alex was not too far behind him with a 1.18, as you guys can see on the screen. And then Sean had a 0.82 and Pollux had a 0.78. So the ARs didn't play too, too well, but the subs made up for it, more than made up for it, and that's why they won the series. Looking at the subliner side, Ace had a 0.92, Mac had a 1.13, Clay had a 0.91, and Hydra had a 1.12. So Mac and Hydra were the only consistent performers for the subliner side, and honestly, I just don't like their form lately, and I don't like how this bodes for them going into stage five and in the champs. Hopefully they can kind of pull something together so they can be a contender again, but I just don't know what's going wrong for them. But one thing is very, very clear. New York subliners, as it stands right now, are no longer a top team in this game. I would put them in... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who they could beat realistically now. I mean, they're losing to everybody, right? Like, they just lost to the Ravens, who aren't even qualified for champs. So the question that we have to raise at this point is, can subliners get it back on track? And if so, who will be the team that they beat to regain momentum. But enough of that, into our next matchup of the day. We, of course, had the Florida Mutineers taking on the Los Angeles Gorillas. And you guys know I was expecting this to be a stomp. But with that in mind, let's look at the one map that was relatively close for the Gorillas. That, of course, being the Moscow S&D. Gorillas played very, very well. Mental had his best performance of the season thus far. He had a 1.29. Silly had a 1.17. Assault had a 1 even. And, of course, Apathy went donk mode. He had a 1.6. So great showing for, of course, the Los Angeles Gorillas. And on the Mutineer side, Neptune and Havoc, the SMG duo for the Mutineers, really struggled in this map. Uh, Neptune at a 0.43 and Havoc at a 0.44. As you guys can see, 
Wake had a 1.33, and Skies went nice and even. So map two for the Mutineers, they really just struggled with their timing, um, and the Gorillas were just in control the entire time. They were getting off rotations. Um, they were playing man advantage very, very well. And even when they didn't have man advantage, they were just playing their situations very, very well. And that was the difference that made the difference in map two. So hats off to the Gorillas. They played their butts off, and they deserved the win. Now looking at the map four, of course, the map where we close things out, Skies dropped 5,000 damage upon their head tops. It was 250 to 226 on Moscow Hardpoint. It went down to the wire, and honestly, the Mutineers should have won a lot earlier than they did looking at the KDs. Um, looking at the Gorilla side, of course, Mental had a 0.64. Not a great showing for him. Silly had a 0.92. Assault had a 0.8. And App had a 0.95. And then on the Mutineers side, Wake had a 0.91. Havoc at a 0.96, Neptune at a 1.06, and Skies had a 2.29 KD, which is absolutely insane. Skies just dropped a bomb on them to close it out. He said, we're done. We all finished. We all done. And he just bounced. So looking at the theory stats, Skies was, I mean, come on. This guy was clearly the KD leader. He had a 1.81, Neptune at a 1.19, uh, Havoc at a 1.05, and Wake had a 1.11. And then on the Gorilla side, Mental had a 0.73. Silly and Assault both had 0.72s. And App went even with a 1KD. So for the Gorillas, more of the same. Chalked and Mutineers, I mean, they won the match that they should have. And I believe they improved to 3-1 and one now in the stage. So that's great for them. Um, they beat Dallas. That was a big matchup that they had to win to make it into winner's bracket. And I think at this point, they're pretty much guaranteed winner's bracket unless they have another weird like head-to-head tiebreaker scenario like they did last stage where they got screwed into losers even though they did beat Dallas and realistically they should have been in winners. They lost the head-to-head and ended up in losers. So hopefully that doesn't come to fruition again. Hopefully they can close out their last game. I think they have to play Ultra. So that should be a dub for Ultra and a dub for Mutineers, but dub in the negative sense for Mutineers if you get my slot. Um, yeah, so... Going into their next matchup against Ultra, I do like Mutineers' chances of winning. They did beat Dallas, and, you know, confidence-wise, that's all they needed. Um, so, I don't know. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Definitely close out the stage. Um, but I think Ultra walk away with it just given their form and their consistency. Uh, so, speaking of Ultra, let's look at the last matchup of the day. And you guys know the rules. Uh, we'll look at map one, just because it was so, so close. It was 250 to 247. Ultra went up like 209 to like 98. And then they got really, really lazy and they let Seattle back in. So looking at the stats, it's kind of reflected that that was the story here. Um, looking at the Toronto Ultra side, Inside at a 1.27, Bants at a 1.17, Kemi at a 1.04, and Kleenex, he kind of had a stinker of a map with a 0.72. And then looking at the surge side, Classic had a 0.7, Octane had a 1.1, Gunless had a 1.25, and Pristini had a 0.89. So not really bad showings from everyone on the surge with the exception of Classic, and great showings from everybody on the Ultra except for, of course, Kleenex. Those two sub players just had their struggles on this map. They got put in the blender. What can you do? Of course, the Ultra rebounded very strong on map two. And they said, hey, we're not going to let you guys back into it. They won standoff s and 6-1. And they took the game three, Gary Control, with a 3-0 to close out the Series 3-0. And yeah, I mean, it was a great showing for the Ultra. Looking at the Series stats, Insight had a 1.26. Thank God he's on my fantasy team. He's single-handedly saving me. Vance had a 1.16. Kami had a 1.46. God, I wish he was on my team too. And of course, Kleenex rounded it out with a 0.93. On the Surge side, Classic had a 0.67. Brissini had a 0.81, Gunless had a 0.85, and Octane was the only player positive with a 1.08. So more of the Octane show. I mean, honestly, the only two players on this team on the Surge side who have gone positive consistently are Gunless and Octane. So I feel for those guys, I think in the offseason, some interesting things definitely need to happen. But I think this core four of Octane, Brissini, Gunless, and Classic needs to break, right? Maybe bring in a rookie, maybe bring in, bring in like a player that I wanted on Seattle from the get-go. Venom, um, someone who's like fast and aggressive as a sub player, you need that. And uh, Seattle needs to really go back to the drawing board early before Rostermania really kicks off so they don't get left in the dust like they have for the last, God, like three seasons. Well, Modern Warfare, they got left in the dust. Same thing happened in Cold War. It would be 
three seasons next year, but you, you know what I'm saying. Now, looking ahead to tomorrow, we have some very, very interesting matches. We're, of course, going to kick things off with the LA Thieves taking on the Paris Legion. And personally, I think this is a 3-1 favor of the Thieves, if I'm being realistic. I think the Legion likely take a map somewhere. I think that, honestly, their best chance to take a map is probably the S&D, just given how new this roster is on the Thieves' side. I think that the Legion have always been a pretty solid S&D team in this game. And I think that realistically, that's their best chance to strike and take a map in the series. But as it stands, I think it's a 3-1 for the Thieves. I think in Hardpoint, they're too much for the Legion, just by a little bit. I think in S&D, they're very close, especially considering the fact that uh, obviously the Thieves don't have as much time with John as they would necessarily like. And of course, in the Control, I think Thieves are better. And then in the second Hardpoint, I think Thieves are better. So I think it's a 3-1. In our next matchup of the day, we of course have my boys on phase. You can do a two-phase up, shout out my boy Selium, taking on Optic Gaming. You guys know I love Optic as well, but honestly, I think FaZe, I think they walk with the season series here. I think it's a 3-1, and I don't think that, honestly, they will break a sweat doing it. I think Optic is going to play them very tight, don't get me wrong, but I don't think there's going to be a point in this series where it looks like, oh my god, FaZe could realistically lose. I think they're tightening up uh, nuts and bolts at this point in the season but they are so ready for champs. Like these guys are just trying to expand their map pool and optics map pool is pretty, pretty shallow if I'm being honest. So if they ego chow optic on a Gary or something like that, I don't really like their chances on the Chicago side. And I, I don't know. I just think their map pool is fundamentally so like shallow. Like I said, that it's hard for them to win against teams like FaZe who can really just throw a, a wrench in the mix, if you will. And just say, hey, Gary Hardpoint or Raid uh, s and or Raid Hardpoint, you know, against a team like Chicago, who has really just a few good maps like Checkmate and, of course, Raid um, Control, that is. So I think it's a 3-1 regardless of the vetoes. I think that FaZe, their map pool is just better than Optics in every way, shape, and form when league matches are brought into question. Scrims, different story. But in the league, I think Optic... They just can't hang yet. And uh, I think it's 3 on for phase. Phase up, and that's my call for tomorrow. Now in our last match of the day, we have the Empire taking on the Rocker. And honestly, I'm smelling an upset here. I think the Rocker walk away with a 3-2 victory. It is their home series, and we do know that teams love to play up during their home series for the added drama, the added flair, etc. So I think it's going to be a 3-2 for the Rocker. I think what likely happens is Rocker come out, they stun Empire winning map one, Empire gets it back, winning map two. Rocker win map three. Empire win map four. And then, of course, Rocker close it out in a very, very, very close game five. We'll call it a 6-4 victory, surprising the entire community, sending everybody into a frenzy. And then I'm going to be on Twitter saying, I called that shit. And people are going to be like, what? And then if that happens, if it doesn't, then Empire win 3-1 and... This is all for naught. So yeah, guys, that'll just about wrap it up for me. I'm thinking, of course, 3-1 Thieves, 3-1 FaZe, and 3-2 Rocker. Going for the upset tomorrow, going for the gusto. Last day of the week, last match of the week. Might as well go full send. If you haven't already, be sure to like and comment on this video. Help to get our engagement up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Share it with a friend or family member. Help the channel to grow if you can. Appreciate you. Follow me on Twitter for more live calls, series updates, and of course, just random tweets. You know, when teams are throwing, I call it out. Um, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter for any of the spiciness, memes, etc., be sure to do that at Fake Sports for Fans. Link down below in the description, as always. And I hope you guys enjoy all the COD action today. Hope you have a great morning, noon, or night, wherever you may be on this beautiful planet. And I'll catch you guys next week with some more action, bringing you our last week of the regular season before we have our long break before champs. So yeah, guys, hope you enjoy all the COD today, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Once again, this is Christian Fake Sports News, and I'm signing off. Peace out, everybody. Have a great night, or afternoon, or morning, whenever you're watching this video. Peace.